gentlemen, I thank you very much for the honor of being here. My apologies for being uh, late because I went to, uh, to a different uh, building where they didn't have this nice room with these nice people. So uh, this is uh, this is uh, the start. I will be talking about uh, uh, bridging bridging some problems in the in the real world life of um, business and IT and align that with the new emerging discipline of enterprise engineering. And the topic is realizing a business ID alignment using modeling instead of programming. And it is within the field of enterprise engineering and within this, this engineering domain, there is the demo model methodology, very important uh, part of it. So this is the agenda. I think you can read faster than I can speak. Some practical things, some, some theoretical things, and so on. Well, first, uh, what is we, who are we? Are Well, we're a professional company. We solve somebody else's uh, problems. We do that in a, we try to do that in a very solid uh, way. Our primary customers are banks and insurance companies. And you may, may think, well, this is very interesting. But it's not, because we have a very big crisis in the Netherlands, in the investment in the world. Investments are very low. They are faced with huge problems on the area of governance, risk and compliance. And uh, they have no idea what the cause of the problems is. And it is very difficult for us to, to tell and explain them what the nature of the problems is. But this is something I would uh, like, to, uh, like to, to, to convey to you this evening. But one of the major things, we, the roles we want to play, is bridging the, bridging the academic world and the professional world. Because these two worlds are very much different. Well, this is about our principles and goals. And the, the top one is very, very important. It's basically, enterprise engineering is about humans who cooperate in a responsible way, who commun communicate, and it sounds very soft, but it is not. It's very fundamental that human values, such as mentioned there, uh, are kept, because anywhere where you find that these human values are, are under siege or taken away by government systems or totalitarian systems or Italian, uh, manufacturing procedures, you see things declining. So, the first advice we give to our customers, you want to make sure that your organization is running as good as possible, make sure that the top condition is met. And, well, the other things are quite, well, obvious. The business is leading, not the IT. It means that the IT people are not the ones who design the business. They are not educated for that. They, that's not their knowledge domain. It's the business, but, and there's the problem, understanding the business is the big, big problem. And, um, well, we, we apply serious engineering methods. Uh, the basic message is state of the art is not good enough, and demo and enterprise engineering's problem. Well, this is the real problem of, this is the real problem we see to, to today um, in, 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 in enterprises. You have the business where you say you, you've, you've got your strategy, you've, you've got your markets, your products, your customers, and you have your organization which says, well, you have to structure that, you have to control it, you have to comply with governance and risk and compliance conditions. Well, there's things as quality and then the, there are the IT systems and the relations between these three domains are very unclear. Nobody is able to, to say, how do I capture this? From this picture, this picture describes the real problems, the crisis in IT we, we see today. Unfortunately, as I will argue with you, IT is not guilty. Programmers are not guilty. But we have to understand the nature of the business, we have to understand what the organization is, and we have to understand what IT systems do and should do or should not do. So this is the problem domain. Well, this is us. Well, please read this. It, is a, it, it, it captures a number of, number of, 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 uh, of uh, things that basically 
the, the notion of business IT alignment is that you have the business, the organization working for the customer, and you can have IT systems which operate totally bug free, but are nevertheless hardly useful for you. And the IT people, the program say, but look, my program has uh, zero bugs, so it's a good program. And I used uh, formal methods, and I used uh, uh, functional languages, or this technology and that technology, and still the business people say it doesn't help us. Well, this notion that this, this, this gap exists between the operation of an enterprise and the functional value, the function of the IT system, this gap is hardly being understood. This is a big problem. So, this is problem one. Business IT alignment fails. The second problem is that IT systems, if you look at the large projects in the government or multinational companies, some, something between 40 and 70% of the projects uh, fail. And um, typically some 30% 30, 30 are reasonably well, uh, they deliver the results more or less as, as wanted, but for the remaining, e either the, the, the IT project is a total failure or they get some partial results. One of our customers just spent, that, that's two years ago, 125 million euro on a very ambitious IT project and the only thing they had is one application which allows people at the desk to check signatures. A customer comes in and they want to sign a check or to sign, sign a document and they can create an image of the original signature placed on some internal document and verify the signature. That application, as simple as it can be, has cost 125 million euro. That's the only result that's left. The rest, the remainder, is thrown away. Now, it seems that um, the IT people are blamed. I think IT people are not guilty because they are able to devise very advanced software systems for GPS, and GSM, medical imaging, you name it. The internet, with all these rogue users, still is running. Everybody tries to sabotage the internet. It is a very robust system. So that basically it's well designed in that, in that sense. The real problem is if we give programmers specifications that are not good enough from a functional perspective or not complete or not coherent or inconsistent or, or with many unnoticeable inconsistency, failures and so on, the programmers are usually not able to recognize and say, well, the specifications are not good, not good enough. And what they deliver is usually useless. So at the end, what you typically see is, is that, well, um, the project uh, goes bankrupt and um, the project is uh, failed or the budget is, is exceeded and, and um, well, everybody blames the IT people. Well, this is the third problem. IT systems resist the evolution. There's the notion of uh, an agile enterprise. An agile enterprise means an enterprise who scans its environment and adopts uh, um, quickly to changes in market, in product, in customer base and so on. So, if the enterprise changes, the supporting IT systems should change too. Well, by its nature of IT systems, they are very rigidly programmed, very rigidly uh, implemented. And that is a big problem. We have to solve that. Well, basically, there are two directions you can solve that. One, that is the theory of normalized systems from uh, Antwerp University, Professor Jan van Els, Professor Harry Mannheim which is an excellent approach. And the other approach is, well, avoid the programming and uh, replace programming by model-driven architectures. Well, that is possible for a part of the domain, not for the whole domain. 
So these methods, these approaches are complementary. It's not a matter of competition. Well, this is about state-of-the-art, state-of-the-art, uh, uh, well, what the, the typical business consultants uh, tell you. You hire them from KPMG or from Nordica or whatever, whatever. So these three things come quickly visible when you look at what they are doing. Our question, does anybody recognize this? Anybody recognizes? Anybody says, I don't agree or disagree or... It's a, it's a controversial uh, statement. I like to, uh, to take ass in that sense. So, so, the message is we do not understand reality well enough and we have these magic methods and we have this uh, bullshit being sold by cons consultants. And the problem is that we have, um, until now, we had no reply to this. But the answer we have is en enterprise engineering. And that the, fo the focus is, well, the, the foundations of enterprise engineering are the same foundations you find in any other engineering uh, discipline, whether it is the engineering of a car engine, or the engineering of a satellite, or the engineering of, of uh, biochemical uh, molecules. All these uh, engineering domains are founded on the same scientific foundations as enterprise engineering. Well, the, the, the founder of enterprise engineering is Jan Lietz. He has been here some time ago. Uh, Robert, he was, did he do a lecture here? Yeah, he yeah. taught uh, students in the course of the okay. Uh, okay. not that this year, but two years ago. Oh yes, yes, I know, he, he, he was here. And, well, now it's so mature that it is just as solid as physics, well, which is a very solid and clear sound science, I would say. So, a number of people have done their utmost efforts to, to found it on good scientific foundations. And, well, I will cover one or a few of the, these engineering issues. One of these issues, one of the, these foundations of engineering is the, the different perception of uh, function and construction um, on the same artifact. And you see this uh, illustrated. Is there anybody? Who of you have, have followed the demo web course? Okay, this sounds... And for the, those who didn't follow the demo course, is this, does this make sense? The two different uh, perspective on, on a system. A functional thing, that's, that's how you use it. It's the black box approach. You don't know what's inside. It could be a box of midgets. You never know. And that's what Jan Dietz always says. It could be a box of midgets. You have no idea what's inside, but it helps you doing your, your thing. And then come the technical people like us and say, well, Maybe it's midgets, maybe it's transistors, maybe it's uh, things like, like, like that. And the lady over there is only interested in driving the car from A to B. And we engineers are more focused on making the engine in such a way that the lady will be happy. That's the foundation of engine engineering. We, we engineers, we make, we create an artifact that is useful for somebody else. And that means we have a very noble uh, profession. Well, another engineering principle is the, the fact you, you make something, it works nicely, and um, well, it could be done better, and you're so, so, so creative enough to find small improvements, and you improve the artifact over time, incrementally, in such a way that the functional use increases. I definitely go to the bicycle and the bike. Well, another engineering example, just a few years ago, Boeing was able 
to improve the efficiency of its wing by 5%, which is an incredible in improvement. How did they do it? How did they do it? Well, they used the engineering sizes, they used formal methods, models, empirical sizes, Navier-Stokes equations, and they did a validation in wind tunnels. So they made the design, the construction, they made calculations, they designed the wind, and then they tested the validation is to is check whether the function is appropriate or not, if it works well. They tested it in wind tunnels, and the results of the test have been used to improve the design. The next step, so you have these design cycles where you incrementally improve your artifact. This is how Boeing people improve this efficiency. Well, who knows what this is? I'm here at the uh, uh, people, people, people who uh, have been educated in these, in these things. I built such a thing myself a long time ago. And radio. What? Radio. Yeah, radio, yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah. But what, what I tell business consultants and business architecture are not able to deliver high quality specifications of enterprises and IT systems. But we radio hobbyists were able to do that. But obviously, if you look at the mess, if you look at the total chaos, at the, the enormous expenses of all these failed IT projects, there is the problem. We are not able to devise high quality specifications. We must do that. Well, here's another example. It says that models are not one dimensional things or two dimensional things. They can be comprised of perspectives from different angles on the same engineering construction. And again, a simple contractor can build this, uh, this thing, but the, the business architectures, we, we, business, we were not able to do this. So it's actually a plea to go to solid engineering. Well, this is the most important picture there, there, there is. It says, well, on the right you see one of the demo models. That is a proposition in a formal language about a phenomena in reality. In that case, it is, on the, it is a proposition. It says something about the phenomena in the real reality. And that is the enterprise and the internal organization of people. If you look at the internal organization of people, what people are doing, that's a complete seamless chaos. It's just a chicken, a chicken barn where at night light goes on. There's this, 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 this chaos. Yet, you must understand it and make uh, some representation uh, like in a, in a formal, formal language. And the way to do it is an ontology. So an ontology is, has two faces. On one face it captures phenomena in the real world and it says there are rules, there are the objects and the things that are there, there are the relations to things and there are also forbidden relations. And the other phase of ontology, that is, there is a formal representation which is shared by stakeholders and that's the foundation where we, the computer scientists, can work on. So, you see that uh, for enterprise engineering, that enterprises on the left are social systems. We have got the enterprise ontology, which is composed of four axioms. And on the right, we have four demo aspect models, four propositions in a formal language that describe the enterprise completely. It's called ontological completeness. And there are all kinds of uh, quality criteria. And if you have a uh, a representation of uh, such an enterprise in a formal specification, you can devise a software engine. That's what I've been doing for the past years, how to design such a software engine that executes these, these models. So this is the foundation on, on which we, uh, we, 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 we try to work. Now, this picture says how uh, enterprise engineering, using the demo methodology, is being applied to devise demo models of an organization.
you start with the first, you start with the first model, then you start shared reasoning about the model with the stakeholders, you in, in, incrementally you improve it and you have this, again, this design cycle where you incrementally improve the quality of the models until all stakeholders say, yes, this is the best representation, this is the, the one and only truthful representation of an ontology we have now of that enterprise. Well, at that moment, you've made a lot of progress because we have now made the step from understanding the business We've shown you how to devise demo model. And if we have this demo model, we, we also have this IT system, this software engine, which is model executing finite state automator system. And we have now a software engine that executes these models. And it does a lot without programming. There's no translation from higher level uh, enterprise model into lower level execution uh, language. So we have a demo modeling, model validation, model architecture, and the model simulation allows you further to, to study the dynamic behavior of your enterprise models, again for validation, for shared reasoning. You go step by step by step. We have available now in, in a very early form, a website portal where you can make these demo models, you can simulate them, you can investigate them and see what happens, and you actually mimic the, the dynamic behavior of, of the enterprise in production. Well, this is, you all recognize this, this picture, do you agree? The waterfall software engineering method. Do you agree that this is the root of much evil? <laughs> do, you, do you agree or not? Well, first of all, this is typically, this is from the 80s or so, where, where people are being taught, well, you start with a design, and once you have your design, you start to do coding. Most people start coding before they even have a design. And, uh, they, they, they go back after coding and they, they re-implement their design. So I put a big red cross because that is a very bad uh, practice. And after coding they do some yeah, verification, testing. They call it testing. Actually it is verif verification to, 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 to control its internal structure. And uh, some programmers uh, then go back to their design and re-implement it, they change the design, they go back again to do some more coding, etc., etc., etc. So, but this is of course a very bad practice. The only thing which is reasonably defendable is that, well, if you've written some code, you have to test it because we're all, all, all humans. So, there are the blue lines that is left. <clears throat> the worst uh, blue line, the worst red line is you've made your design your program, you coded it, you tested it, you're going to use it, you deploy it, and then you discover hmm, it doesn't help me. My customer is not satisfied and says I've got this problem and that problem and this doesn't work as I, as I need. Let's change it, uh, change the design. Well, this is, this is precisely why all these huge IT projects uh, fail if they are violating these, these, these uh, rules. So, after deployment, you have to be sure that it's working, working correctly. So, but with this model-driven approach we have, we do much more. What we do is, is what you see on the, on the right side, the business specification, the demo modeling, putting the models in the IT system, model simulation, model validation, and if you compare that to the, the problematic waterfall method, you see that the coding is gone and verification is, is gone because it's impossible to create incorrect models or models that can't exist in reality and so on. So you have a, a guaranteed uh, flawless thing. Just, so once you have made your model, you can deliver 
the system, IT system, you don't have to test it anymore because testing is absolutely uh, useless. <coughs> We have got a, a, con a concept which we call the Enterprise Operating System. We go again through the cycle. On the top left you have the, the organization, you have, you've got the Enterprise, and uh, you have there the, the, the demo models, and you go further, and you see what does this engine provide? Well, it provides business process modeling, it provides workflow management systems. We call it the enterprise operating system because it has the same capabilities, similar capabilities as a normal uh, uh, operating system running on your PC. A normal operating system controls every flip-flop, register, CPU you have in your, the hardware you have. And, um, the operating system provides a platform for all kinds of application programs to run in a very, to be installed and run in a very easy way. Imagine if you have no operating system running on your computer and you want to have a few of the, a browser, a text editor and some more programs. Think about how incredible difficult it would be to do that without an operating system it would be virtually almost impossible to install, install these applications uh, without an operating system. Do you agree? Okay, well, this is what, uh, this, is what this, this operating system does. So we have got the, the demo models and on all enterprise IT systems, they are running on top of this op operating system. So we have an abstraction layer between um, enterprise IT systems, corporate IT systems, and the hardware being the people in the organization. It, the effect is that all these financial IT systems, the production systems, and supporting IT systems will become much easier to implement. And these will be implemented in a very different way also. And here is an enormous field of new research for the, for, 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 the, for, the, for the future. Well, this is this one. We've got one business case in, in full production. That's a company like, like, like this. It's uh, utilities. Um, you can buy water, electricity and gas. And they are quite, quite big. Uh, they have a, a few hundred thousand uh, customers. And if you order, you, you, you order your, your gas, water, electricity, you have to sign a special contract with them. And the contract has to comply with many conditions in this, this business case. So this is the, 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 the cases we built for one of our, our customers. And, um, well, there's a lot, a lot of uh, internal regulations that has to be met. A lot of documents that have to be produced. Each contract is tailor-made, so that's, that's quite, quite difficult uh, to, 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 to capture. And what we did is um, we made a demo model. Well, this is, this is the actual demo model we, 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 we devised from this business procedure. I'm not going to, to, I'm not going to explain this, this model, because that's not relevant. But it, it shows that this model is being executed by the demo engine and we estimate some 80% reduction in program, in number of lines. The joke, the joke is that if, and that happened a few times, that the company says, yes, we, we are facing with changing regulations or we, to, we want to do things in a slightly different way, they only have to change the model on the left. We put it in a machine, and from that moment on, the whole organization runs according to the new business model. So that model tells everybody how to work, what to do, what the sequences is, and it is impossible for the people in the company to deviate, to work in another way, outside the state space of this model. Well, well it runs. Customer 
satisfied. They're not really interested in why we did this that way. They simply say, well, if we expect you to deliver a good working program. Yeah, we're not, not, not interested in all these uh, technical things. So, uh, well, also finally, we have a, 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 a lot of new um, research uh, topics where a technical university could be, uh, well, could, 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 could do a lot of good, good work. This uh, afternoon I had a uh, further discussion with uh, Robert Pelio and some more ideas came, and came, came up. So it is a very new engineering field. There's a lot of things to be done. Some very uh, serious uh, technical problems have to be uh, solved. Well, this is what we have for future research, and we have also much, much, uh, much, much more. Well, this is what we think uh, the future may look like. IT systems becoming a commodity, cheap. You de develop models, you send them to somebody else, and a short time la later you receive your IT system, and that's it. Cheap, mass, mass produced, manufacturing, just like uh, well, the, the type of work uh, well, you, you, you find in, in China something like that, mass production of IT systems. It, this, this won't go to China, but this is what we, we expect it will go into this direction. What, what it really means that the real focus of engineering will focus on the functional qualities of an enterprise and the efforts to devise high quality models. Good. This is it. The red line in the bottom, that's very, very important, that's a key notion. We think that the best way to let an organization run is that the people of the organization devise their own business models because they are responsible for the customer. They should de design their way of working and um, we should help them in doing so. But uh, yeah, this is what we believe the future will go. Um, maybe not completely, I don't think so, but uh, quite a large step into that direction. Now, why should we do this research in enterprise engineering? Well, first of all, the biggest one is we can solve a big problem in society. We can give excellent education to students with capabilities that solve the, the problems. There's a lot of research to be done. Society will benefit, university will benefit, science will benefit. That's, that's how, how I look at it. And uh, uh, yeah, I like this, this sequence of pictures. We are very much at it somewhere there at the beginning. We've got a few things that fly already a little bit, but um, well, much more is to be done. Uh, so on the right you see work might be uh, something like our of the future. Thank you, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. Do you have any do you have any questions? Or do you oppose the visions presented here to you? That's also possible. That you don't agree. Um, may I start? Yes. Um, I would say that there is no arguments which I would like to raise, but uh, I was really impressed with the idea how to simplify the whole process and the alignment with business. Now, yes. when, when, you, when we say that, uh, you have already tried several times to sell Gmail to many enterprises, haven't you? Yes. Yes. What is your experience? What would you say is the main obstacle or barrier to implement Gmail easily and successfully on the customer side? That's an excellent question. That's, that's one of the, 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 the key, key problems uh, we, we, we have. That I can answer this, this uh, question from uh, several perspectives. First of all, we are very little guys. And uh, we, we, if, if we open our mouth, it will be so much. 
And um, especially in the Netherlands, big corporations do only business with big consulting firms. Mm -hmm. And the big consulting firm firms are only interested in eating the budget of these large... That's the only thing that, that's really happening. They don't like people who say, well, you're making a mess or, or, or what, whatever. Well, whatever. So there is a big barrier for us with our little mouth to say, well, he's, he's doing this right or that, that is bullshit and, and so on. Nobody believes us. Um, the only way to make people believe us is cooperation with the scientific research institutes and universities because we are scientists. We are supposed, and that's a, that's a really almost sacred uh, obligation, to tell the truth, the scientific truth, as well as we understand. And in, in general, um, well, scientists, they are credible people. Salespeople, nobody trusts them anymore. Bankers, nobody trusts them anymore. Politicians, nobody trusts them anymore. Scientists, well, you can <laughs> trust them. Especially engineers. So, yeah, well, they don't have this, 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 uh, they only have the focus on, 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 on their, their job. So to answer your, your question, first of all, yes, it's very difficult to, to, to raise our voice, and the only way to do it is convinced with, with, with facts. The second thing, and that is a more, uh, more practical strategic issue we do with that, what, what we want to do, and we want to do that together with Robert Pergel and some other people, we want to have, we need more empirical evidence of real business cases that we can solve. We think that in banking and financial services there are huge problems with governance, risk and compliance. And governance means that the organization operates according to internal principles. Risk means how do you identify and mitigate risks during the operation. And compliance, you have to comply with Basel, 1, 2, 3, 4, Sarbanes, Oxley and a uh, whole that. How to implement that? That is where we see, see the, ma the major problem. We need some more empirical cases that we can handle these problems. Business cases, not too simple, not too big. But we need this to, to have empirical evidence. Once we have that, I will go to the president of the National Bank in the Netherlands. I will knock on his door and say, we think we have the right engineering approach for these problems you have. At that moment, it is almost impossible for him to say, mm, I'm not interested. He has to, has to investigate it, whether it's bullshit or not. Because maybe it's not bullshit. So maybe it could be, could be true. So this is the second answer to your, 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 your question. We need business cases. We need business cases to, to get some more empirical evidence. And then we can go to the big players. The second, the third um, thing is, well, if we can um, convince these high, highly placed people with big problems, I've heard that some of these people don't sleep well at night. Well, these people are the exceptions because they have a conscience. Most of them don't have a conscience, so these, these people sleep very well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that is, that is our personal, this, this is the, per, the strategy which are all, all, also we discussed with uh, with with Robert, Robert, Robert Pagel, how to circumvent it. But you are right; it is very difficult uh, to sell the demon. Then there's a fourth problem. People look at demon and say, mm, "I don't understand anything." And they see this simple toy with these boxes and a circle and the lines and a few things. And the, there's um, a, a demon professional says, "Well, here's your model." And they say, yeah, "What is it?" And then comes another guy, he brings a BPMN model with him. So he says, look, that's happening, that's happening. He will say, yes, that's what I understand, I like it. But BPMN is a disaster. It is absolutely a disaster. But it's much easier to sell. It, this is so abstract, so formalized that, well, yeah, only engineers understand it. However, however, one other thing is that this model, this model on the left, has been designed 
together with the staff of, 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 of that company, and they were able to understand, okay, first you do this, and then we do that, and so we do that. So it is possible that people understand it. So, this is my answer to your question, sir. It is a very important question. Understood. Yeah. Yes. So, what was the main difference between demo model and BPM model? Oh, yes. Uh, BPM model is not uh, founded on an ontology in a formal uh, way. So, it doesn't define the, precisely the concept. Uh, in fact, BPMN has many concepts, mm -hmm. and there is a problem which is called in ontology theory a concept overload. Another uh, problem is that um, there is no abstraction between um, the, the implementation, independent design, and a specific implementation. And Robert can explain that precisely. A third fundamental problem is that. Um, it is not a formal specification. Mm -hmm. So it's people who say we have an engine that executes BPMN. Well, some of them have been saying that, but actually that's not possible because it is not a formal specification. It is impossible to, to devise a, a, a machine that executes BPMN models. The fourth problem with BPMN is the ontological incompleteness. Well, you can design the happy flow. The, the normal process uh, steps of, of execution, but uh, that will work reasonably well in practice. But if anything strange happens, uh, there is a, a rollback of processes. Well, this is almost impossible to capture in BPMN. Mm -hmm. I can simp simply show that if I would draw this scheme here in BPMN, I would need precisely some, somewhere 52 pages mm -hmm in BPMN. From this model I can generate, I can make by hand a BPM model which is um, functionally equivalent to this, but I will need 52 times because, well, you see this circle, the way which, which is only the circle, but underneath this circle is a complete communication pattern and we have a very simple symbol for that, but there's a lot of information, a lot of structure under these models. These models have very highly abstract representations. Well, four reasons doesn't work mm -hmm. well. But people like BPMN. And, and uh, Dimo, Ingen, you mentioned it's your company's business uh, product. Which, uh, which is yeah. based for producing the software, based on the Yeah, yeah. We, we've got two, two activities. We, we make uh, information systems for banks and insurance companies, they do this kind. And from time to time we get a project, uh, not much because the investment levels are very low. Mm -hmm. And uh, life, well, okay, we're surviving, but it's, it, it's a it, it's tough, uh, tough uh, business. But we, from time to time we make these systems. But we want to, uh, what we really want to do is to have this engine available for everybody, for students and so for a very low price, say the price of a book. For professionals, they, well, they pay some fee for if you use the, the, the modeling environment. And it's also a production <coughs> system, a production system that will, will, will run uh, as, as, a, as a web service and uh, you only make your models and everything is complete and you don't have to invest in software licenses, you simply run the engine. So it will be very cheap to use, but that's the business model we are in. So there is a lot of work to do? So. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, there's a, there, it's a mountainous, mountains of work. Could, could you go back to the slide with us? Model simulation, model validation, there was such, such a slide. With yeah, you. I, I will go back and if you, you, say, you, if you say stop. If, if you could comment more on that uh, from the uh, perspective of what this, this yeah yeah this one uh, no the previous one again again back yeah. this, this one this one this one this one oh, yeah okay right. sorry uh, because we are a faculty which uh, the UK is in software engineering yes so what what I'm interested in how much work for student projects is in developing such a framework which makes all these four phases of development easier. Uh, by providing software tools? Um, yeah. Uh, 
we have also made some some plans with with uh, Robert on on that uh, topic. We have uh, one one student. He is from Costa Rica, and uh, we are going. He is going to pick an ITIL procedure. Are you familiar with uh -huh. ITIL? He is going to pick one of them. It is a best practice approach, it is represented in flowcharts, so there are all kinds of hidden problems in, in flowcharts. Uh, what, what he should do is to devise a demo model based on the purpose of the, the function of this, this, this uh, ITIL business procedure, simulate it, design the best implementation, and make it, make it, it, it running. And Delivering some kind of a cookbook, meaning, okay, here's this problem, this 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 ETL post procedure is not good. I did it with demo, I validated, went through the steps, and these and these and these are the, the advantages. The advantages are quite big. My, my business partner did a master's thesis at the Antwerp University and did also this, and uh, the, the impact is very the impact is very very large. So. That's one area, another area where we can be successful and solve real-life uh, problems in detail. Also, equally uh, interesting is COVID. You're familiar with COVID? Not, not much. Okay, but, but that's more about the internal procedures, uh, making sure that your IT systems are available and so on. It's much more vague, and it's, it's more in the domain of governance. Um, devising the devising the, the procedures and implementing that the procedures that strategy decisions are being implemented and carried carried out. We have a, a global recipe how to address them, but that's also new. Mm -hmm. But with uh, Robert, uh, we, we had this, we discussed this idea that um, uh, uh, Czech University could be the competence center for ETL and say to the whole world. Well, you're doing this ETO, but you, you can do much better using enterprise engineering. That's 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 one one thing we just interesting idea. Another idea which uh, Robert came and said we, we we have a procedure for assessment of of uh, master's theses and bachelor theses, and these have to be assessed and the various production steps in there. And could that be done with demo? Yes, because with, with these tools, yes, that can. And we, well, that could be some kind of a foundation services mm -hmm. provided to other universities. Could also be a source of income for the universities to to to, to hire more people and and so on. Mm -hmm. Well, let me say a few words to this. Uh, we commented here the faculty that process oriented information system for bachelor and master physics. Some of you already have uh, some experience with that. In famous system. And if I take apart the technical issues that come from the platform of IBM and its configuration and things like that, uh, it's a huge success because the system is based on process Moodle and you can even, as a user, you can click and you can see where you are in the process and what is happening and what will happen, happen next. So this is very, very important because usually as systems are built and previous systems were built was that uh, there is no model and you, everything is hard coded. <coughs> so if some regulations change now, the changing of the system will be much more easier and, and, and flexible and again you will see where you are and what will happen. This is a huge success. Uh, but at the same time you can always be better and better and the way to become better is this approach also. So what we are saying with Steve that we can experimentally uh, we, we will build a system using using demo and see how, how this, this compares on a conceptual level, right? We are not speaking now about how, how much load or, uh, of requests the system can handle. Of course, this is not something that we are now doing. We are speaking about conceptual level because, for example, right now, if you click on the process of the diploma thesis, you will see different boxes. And one of them says um, approval of, this, of the thesis by, by, by Dean. This is fine. This should be in there. But at the same time, there is another book that says assign ID to thesis. This is something very technical, 
that you are not interested in as a user. And the reason why there are so many boxes, mixed boxes which you are interested in, mixed boxes which you which are technical, is that what Steve already mentioned, the BPM doesn't uh, discern clearly the ontological level and the implementation level, and they are all mixed mixed together. Uh, well, in demo, as you could see, our model to be much much uh, more. Much more easy to read, much more, much more concise. Those TCs, concise, coherent, and so on, complete. And at the same time, it should provide the same functionality. So this is something we want to pursue and we want to to test. As you already heard, uh, we are cooperating. The faculty and and format is <coughs> we already have one one bachelor thesis focused on demo uh, one one project of of uh, Erasmus student. And if you are interested, then you are also welcome to uh, to join this those uh, interesting things. There is a lot of lot of work, a lot of lot of ideas, as you could see. Uh, when you are thinking now about your more questions, I will out to the blackboard, the web page of our group. Hang on, please. What stain is this? Is this picture still? Uh, look, I have a, such a such an ordinary comment. I would say. Uh, if you want to keep your customer happy, yes. then obviously you have to be able to provide him with some feedback during the oh yes since yes. the start yes. of the of the yes. Yes. yes yeah what would be your suggestion how frequently you would suggest to run a steering committee with customer with the stakeholders because they need to know and to believe that something after some time will really come. So what is the, let's say, sub-result which we can offer at some steering committee? How this looks like, so this is your comment. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, basically, basically um, it's not um, when we start a project, we start a work, a work, a work group and the, the, the most important participants are the people of the organizations themselves. Yeah. Stakeholders, yes. Yes, yeah, stakeholders. And we explain to stakeholders how it works and, uh, and, and, and in global terms. And it's basically the stakeholders, we help them design their own organization. And um, that is quite a time consuming job. But any time spent here, you earn back 10 times or 100 times more later. So really, this is, this, is, this is the key. This is human engineering, knowledge engineering, and so, so on. But within, um, if you have a business case which is not too complex, but certainly not too trivial, um, you can, we, we typically have in two, three, four days, we have gone through this whole process and we have made such a demo model there and we put it in the machine and we can simulate it, all the steps to it, if this happens then that happens and so on, the whole communication. And uh, then the, the stakeholders can, can say, yes, I agree, this is the way it should be done. In this, if we take this model, we, could, we comply with external regulations, internal policies and, and, and so on. That's one step. We, then we would like to do another step within a few days and to add an adaptive case management systems for the production of documents. We do this very simply, but at that moment you have an application which is primitive, but can be used, can be used immediately in production. It's ready for production. So you have all, at that time you have an IC, IT system that addresses the business IT alignment problem. Um, I have some other questions, but it's not necessary to raise that because we have fixed this road by the meeting with you for tomorrow. Yes, so of course. Yeah, yeah. That one on one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. More questions? Well, uh, I'm, uh, I'm expecting some very critical questions from mm -hmm. the normal professionals. I, you, you made a statement that uh, Maybe I misunderstood, but on one side you have chaotic company enterprise, 
Yes. On the other side, you have clear, well-defined, semantically ontology-defined demo model. Yes. yes. How do you cover the gap between the chaos and the order in the model? Okay, yes. It's yeah. It's this this yeah. it is uh, this this uh, picture and uh, well it, it's an ontology and it says basically ontology is is about throwing everything away when, that you don't need and keeping only those elements that are re re relevant. Mm -hmm. The problem is how do you know that these uh, concepts or objects are relevant? Well, that is something that's, that's uh, covered by the theory of, of ontology, the appropriate the truthfulness uh, uh, qualities of all ontology. Mm -hmm. But, um, well, it's basically, enterprise ontology is a hypothesis, and it's uh, subject to proper falsification, falsification laws. So far, it seems to work. Maybe one day somebody comes and says, proves, well, enterprise ontology is flawed. Just one case is enough, and then enterprise ontology, including all what I said this evening, is that going that uh, direction. But keep things crossed. So far, nobody came up with a proof, the disproof of Popper's uh, falsification uh, law. But uh, yeah, that's that's well. We we think this is this this works, and uh, this confidence is increased by more and more and more mm -hmm. business applications. And we have all already quite a big body of. Uh, business cases which show it works here, it works there, it works there, it works there. But to address the problems of governance, risk, and com in compliance in, in the large banking com conglomerates, I want to, if the moment I knock on their door, I want to have more cases in this specific specific field. Really proven. That's it. That's, mm -hmm. that's it. But this this is the the the, the, the core importance of, a, of, of, a, of an ontology to try to understand some phenomena in the, in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, it's vague, it's... Mm -hmm. you only can validate it, you can... until you disprove it, and... Mm -hmm. well, empirical sciences. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe. Uh, a lot of people here are like software, software engineers yes. and um, you are interested in implementation. Maybe I, I know this, but uh, maybe you could uh, for the others a little bit more about this last step of transforming the demo model or running the demo model on the machine, like the information system. Maybe a uh, little bit like feel like magic now, how, how from the demo model there is a uh, something running on the machine without programming or without minor programming? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah well, if you, but basically it's a computer science question. If you have, if you have a, um, a domain ontology and it's really a formal explicit specification, then it's possible to devise a language that, uh, that can be used to specify propositions on the, on the domain. And you can, the same theory tells that you can devise a software engine that, well, it's implemented using an object-oriented approach, of course, but it is a native interpreter machine that interprets it, that understands the concepts of enterprise ontology. So, they don't understand what an actor is, and an initiator, and an executor, and a transaction, and so on. That's what it understands. It doesn't understand um, the, the concept of real number. We don't have that. And mm -hmm. we, we don't have things like an integer, integer number or, or the normal uh, programming uh, primitives. These, these are very low level. We have a, actually a very simple engine. And the only thing this engine can do is execute anything within this domain ontology. So it is a, a limited machine with limited expressiveness. Mm -hmm. as much as possible. It is impossible to make a model of an enterprise which cannot exist in reality. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. Also, it means also that 
any enterprise, if you model it, can be rep represented by guaranteed one model, not two, not zero. There's one and only model that gives a, a, a true representation of an enterprise. There, uh, it's not possible to make two models which are functionally identical. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a very primitive, very simple thing altogether. There's all those problems. Mm -hmm. If you start writing a programming in Java, and you write a program, and you write a program, I write a program, uh, all the three programs will be different implementations, different algorithms maybe, or, or, or whatever, and all these programs can be correct. But the problem with these low-level programming languages is you have too much design freedom. Your expressiveness is too large. This, the expressiveness of this engine is minimized precisely to any model, to any enterprise that may exist in reality. So it's impossible to make illegal enterprises and it's guaranteed that any enterprise is represented by only one model. So it becomes very simple. And are all these statements are proven? That proven is what, what, what is being proven? Yes, yes, well it is theoretically there is a, is a, is a, is a, um, a, a logic a logic system below mm -hmm. informal specifications and predicate logic and so on. So, uh, is it correct to say that it's something like analogy if you have a, a computer and you have a Java virtual machine which gives you sort of layer abstraction that can uh, you can speak with objects and send messages and things like that and this is sort of this like uh, layer that that runs on your computer and it understands actors and transactions yes 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 there is a communication facility with with actors an actor is is um, he has a freedom but uh, he is not able to act outside the state space of the the model and uh, of course an actor has freedom if, if you're familiar with the demo if i do a request to you do something for me you can say yes i do it or you can say no i don't you have this this, this freedom but you have not the freedom to do something else. So you are supposed, if you say, you know, I do a promise, I do it for you, you are expected to do it, and, and so on. So it, it is a, a prescriptive control of the enterprise, of the people in the enterprise. They cannot work outside the state space of the model. So it guarantees that in banking, people follow the procedures precisely and not do all kinds of silly things outside, which may pose risks. Mm -hmm. Did I answer your question? So if we will think about rede redesigning our information system for student agenda, would you, would you be willing to experiment with this approach absolutely. to do it? Yes, absolutely. Yes. But I got you this one from the other. <laughs> yeah, I would be a little bit like cautious in a, in a way that of course this doesn't uh, cover user interface things, for example, designing user interface to be um, to include the most most uh, high tech technologies. Those are like things that you need to uh, take care separately, and unfortunately, those are also the things that uh, make the user experience the, the biggest. So, um, our goal now is to to prove the concept of designing, designing the system and uh, yeah, I would not be too hasty to put a production system based on this because once the user interface is not, not good then the people will say, oh, demo is a, is a horrible thing, it produces such horrible systems yeah, and yeah, few yeah, people would understand that those are two separate things yeah, yeah. Yeah, Ajax and, and JavaScript uh, yes. and demo here, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> There's, there's still a lot of uh, standard programming left, but the core, the business processes being followed, uh, the, 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 the control of the organizations, the knowing of each elementary act and fact, well, it, it, we have an operating system, but on top, well, many, many applications are needed. And that's outside, outside our scope. University of Technology in Prague. Thank you.
Thank you.